As someone who cut his teeth during the NES era, Shovel Knight was easily one of my most anticipated games of the year. It's a complete throwback. Though pixel art is a dime a dozen these days, for most games this is purely a stylistic choice. Shovel Knight is a different beast altogether. Strongly reminiscent of classic Nintendo games like Mega Man, Ghosts and Goblins, and DuckTales, the game's retro design is about much more than just style. The graphics are occasionally a little bit better than what the NES was capable of, but aside from that, if someone told you that this was a long-lost Capcom game from 1991, you could easily believe it. If you grew up with games like this, this is your game. Stop watching this and just play it. Even if you didn't, this is a superlative platformer and one that any fan of the genre needs to play. Of all the NES era influences, Mega Man seems like the game's strongest. The way the levels progress is straight out of that series. Each level has a theme, and, like Mega Man, ends with a boss you have to fight. And without going into spoilers, the Mega Man connection is cemented even further in the game's final stretch. Like a lot of games of the era, it's challenging. I'm pretty sure that the amount of times that this game raised my blood pressure probably shaved a good month or two off of my life. It's been quite a while since a game has so frequently made me want to throw my controller out the window in a fit of rage. I loved every second of it. There are a couple of things that a super challenging platformer like this has to have. The first is really great level design that doesn't feel cheap and always seems fair. The second is tight controls. If you feel like you should have been able to make a certain jump or kill an enemy and the controls let you down, then the game has probably taken a turn that it can't recover from. That's never an issue here. The levels in Shovel Knight are ingeniously designed, and the simple controls feel just right. There are only two buttons to keep track of here, the jump button and the button to swing your shovel. Press up along with the shovel button and you'll use one of your relics, or press down while you're jumping to do a shovel drop. But, more importantly, the way your character moves and jumps, which can be a sticking point with games like this, always feels perfect. Despite the game's difficulty, there are a handful of concessions to modern sensibilities, most notably a fairly generous checkpointing system. Don't get me wrong, you'll still be playing through stretches of some levels again and again and again, it's not too forgiving, but unlike a Mega Man game, the game will never make you start over from scratch once you hit a checkpoint. It's frustrating, but it feels like a very finely honed level of frustration. The game never feels cruel. Also, I can't end this review without mentioning the insanely catchy, pitch-perfect soundtrack. If the graphics and gameplay weren't enough to make this feel like a long-lost NES classic, the score certainly cements it. It's pretty great. Seriously, let me make this very clear. If you're a fan of classic NES platformers, you have to play this game. I'm not saying you should play it, I'm saying you must. It recaptures everything that made the best platformers of the era so great. It's just so much fun. It made me feel like a kid again. I literally got flashbacks to sitting in front of the TV as a kid playing Nintendo games for all hours. It is pure, unbridled joy. If you're like me, it's about as close to a time machine back to your childhood as you're going to get. <laughs>